Welcome once again, my friends from all over the world. Today we have another show of hemp engineering, and it is a great pleasure to have with us Mr. Iggy Van. He is the CEO of the Square Hemp. They manufacture hempcrete blocks here in Western Australia, which is a, a bless for our state, for Australia and the whole world. This is Ramon Granados. Uh, yeah, we are trans, uh, broadcasting from Perth, Australia, and Iggy is right there in the cent epicenter of the city that has the largest concentration of hempcrete homes on earth. Welcome, Iggy, to our show. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. The pleasure is mine, my brother. This interview has been pending in my mind for a long time since I met you in the Perth Home Show. That's right, yeah. And, and to tell you the truth, uh, in that show, I got the vision that we should have our own expo of hempcrete homes or all the materials that we do in parallel to the, to the hemp Perth Home Show. And yeah. then I was inspired and then I launched the Hemp Home Expo and last year. Uh, which I hope man, this year you come with us as well. And mm -hmm. yes, it was a great success and people yeah. from all over the world came and yes. <laughs> yeah. Now it was um, when I was at the Hemp Expo, um, it's, it's great to see a lot of products being promoted there. But when I spoke to the people who are organizing that particular event, um, sustainability is something that is coming more and more to the fore. And, um, knowing how many products are being made out of hemp for use in the building industry, um, it would make total sense to have a home expo just on hemp products uh, or hemp related products and showcase what they can do. Well, Iggy, may, this may be a project that you and I will promote to make it happen. Uh, absolutely. Iggy, tell us, how did you end up in the, in the hemp business? Um, well, to start off right at the beginning, I wanted to be a jet fighter pilot. Um, but I got, uh, I got glasses and at the time you couldn't fly with glasses and uh, contact lenses. So I ended up going into mechanical engineering that was the closest uh, to working with airplanes. Um, I finished my mechanical engineering and um, never did any mechanical engineering after that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my career took me to many wild places. Um, I did uh, a lot of quality assurance, uh, electrical engineering. I had my own internet service provider, computer um, business. Um, I went into structural engineering, construction engineering. Um, I ended up in Aboriginal communities, putting water supplies in Aboriginal communities. Um, and um, yeah, basically managing um, uh, teams of people in technical fields. That's really where I've been um, doing a fair bit of, of work. Um, but three years ago, I had enough of that side of, the, um, of my, my career. And, um, and I really wanted to make sure that uh, my, my next um, phase in my career was going to be focused more on um, some, giving something back. Our generation has made um, some big mistakes. Yes. And um, uh, like many uh, other people in, in my generation, um, we're looking for ways how we can use our, our skills, our expertise, our leadership um, to leave the better in a better place than what we got. It. And um, I spoke to my daughter um, and asked her what's, what's um, important to you. And, and, and she said, well, one of the things that's really worrying me um, is, um, is, is climate change. So I thought, okay, well, what can I do? Um, at the same time, I, I had uh, a block um, of land in Bridgetown, um, which was going to be my retirement plan, um, build a house there, beautiful views and all those sort of things. And one of the things that I found out um, is that in summer, that block is beautiful. In winter, it is an absolute nightmare. It is very, very steep. And when the rain falls, it gets very slippery as well. 
So I had a nice uh, slide sideways down the hill. Um, and at that moment, um, I thought, I cannot get any uh, building equipment on this site. I have a big problem getting uh, anything like concrete trucks. There's no road frontage. There's no concrete trucks that I can get there. I can't get cranes there. I can't do anything. So I needed to have material that was lightweight that I could build with. Um, so I started doing a lot more research and in combination with what my daughter said, I ended up finding out about hempcrete. And hempcrete was great. And then I saw um, Hemp Blocks, uh, the company ISO Hemp in Belgium, uh, that produced these blocks. And I went, wow, that's great. Where in Australia can I get these? And I couldn't get them anyway. Yep. <laughs> so I went, I'm going to make it myself. And um, that's when I started researching. Um, and I started working with uh, some people who supplied me um, um, material so we could start working on how does this work in Australia? If we are going to produce blocks, how will that work in Australia? Does the recipe that we get from the manufacturer actually work? So we did a lot of research on that. We did a lot of research on how can we actually produce hemp blocks um, that, um, that have the same features every block at the time. And um, so there was a lot of, um, lot of um, R&D that was done in that space because um, it is a product that you don't want to compact. You want to keep it as fluffy as possible when you make it. Um, but at the same time, it needs to be strong enough so that it stands up when, uh, when, when you first make it. Um, the, the product is very, very soft. Hempcrete is very soft when you first produce it. So you don't really want to move too much. So there was a lot of trial and error that we had to do to make sure that we got all that sorted out. Um, in that process, we also found out that um, initially the idea was to, to actually think about the whole supply chain from um, giving the seed to the farmer, getting the farmer to grow it, then we would come in and harvest it, we would process it, uh, we would use the processed material to wholesale or using our own products um, to then sell to people um, uh, as an end user. Um, but we quickly came to the realization that there were several of these, these, these parts of the supply chain that were already in, in train. So we had Gary Rogers um, and, and David Campbell who are setting up the, uh, the Mag River processing facility. So we went, hey, that is, that's taken care of. Let's, let's get these guys to, to do their thing and, and, and develop that further. Um, and so, so we started to look at where are the gaps and those gaps we found is the end user product, the, the products are not there. And uh, Pemcrete blocks were perfect to promote sustainability, to, to start looking at um, other problems that we have got in Western Australia with uh, energy use, with waste. Um, which are really worrying when you when you see the statistics in uh, in scientific papers. Um, so for us, it was a, a very uh, clear choice then to get this hemp block idea set up, get factories. We initially started with a nano factory, which is now operational. We are now going to go into an expansion project. Um, so that we can make um, much larger quantities of, um, of product uh, very soon. And after this unfortunately event that happens um, some months ago where uh, not just your factory, but basically the whole town was vanished from, from the bushfire, I guess uh, that also uh, brought up into the light the what the hempcrete actually stands for. Uh, yes. The fire resistance capabilities is a big benefit for, for our market. Um, yep. You know that we Buddhists believe that the, the lotus flower uh, uh, blooms from the mud. And I mm -hmm. believe that this fire was a blessing for any person that had any doubts what hempcrete 
he can stand for. That's what I felt. And I actually told you. So. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we had the fires go through. Um, we were lucky enough that the, um, the machinery was not impacted by the fire, but 90% of our stock that had not cured was totally impacted. And the stock that was... Um, um, that was fully dried and cured, uh, was not touched other than a bit of scorch marks. The pellets underneath the blocks burned, but the blocks themselves did not. Um, so it was a, a great um, opportunity to showcase what we can do, although it cost us a lot of money. Um, <laughs> um, it is, on the other side, a really good demonstration that, yes, hempcrete is a product that we need to seriously consider when it comes to um, areas where fire resistant homes are uh, uh, something that needs to be considered. Absolutely. This has been a great interview, very intense and full of passion and knowledge. And Absolutely. <laughs> but Igit, what message would you send to the decision makers in, in Perth or the rest of Australia on, on this regard? Um, I think one of the th uh, messages that needs to go out loud and clear is that the realization that hemp as a product and a whole of plant product, so not just in the fiber market, but anything that can that hemp can be used for, um, the decision makers need to get up to scratch with what it can do. There is still so many gaps in their knowledge. So how can you possibly make a decision if you don't know what the facts are? So my message is start to educate yourself about what the possibilities are, make decisions, and then support those decisions with a financial injection. Um, one of the things that we have experienced as a startup is that um, in Western Australia, 0.2% of all the money that is being invested is invested in startups. We are a startup. We have done everything so far with our own money. There is no investment. And we were lucky enough that we, um, and, and humbled as well, might I, might I say, that we were one of the five recipients out of a field of 75 people who received uh, a regional economic development grant from um, the Department of Primary Industries and Regional oh. Development. Wow, this is really good. Absolutely. So that was $100,000. Um, but we need to match that funding um, with a 50% of uh, 100% of the funding. Um, so we need to find $100,000 to match that. Um, we actually need uh, much more funding. And we've said to the government, it's great to have these, um, these, these grants. But when you're a startup, start looking at some of the other uh, possibilities of not having that much funding um, or start thinking about um, public-private partnerships, PPPs, uh, yes. where the government makes an investment, private industry makes an investment, and especially in things like processing plants um, that need to be in certain areas to make this industry viable. The government really needs to make an investment in that, just like they many years ago did in, in um, mining and in the timber industry. Now it's the turn off the hemp industry. And um, we're lucky enough that there is a, uh, a willingness within government at the moment um, to actually listen to that message and to, they are very supportive of our industry, but um, 100,000 here and 50,000 there and 200,000 there is not going to do it. There is a, uh, a large investment required to get this up and running. And we've seen in other states that this is actually working. Tasmania is a great example where they recently started doing some real good stuff. New South Wales is in train. We shouldn't be left behind. The decision makers need to get behind the in hemp industry and make sure that the investment is made to make sure that the hemp industry is going to be viable in Western Australia? Uh, personally speaking, but this is just um, uh, a, a personal perspective and approach as a human being, citizen, but above all, as a Latino. Um, in Latin America, we believe that um, 
in the hemp industry uh, expecting the governments to help this industry to grow is like you are going to have a <clears throat> party with your kids and invite a pedophile to the table. They don't care. Mm. They don't care. Mm. It has been 80 years of prohibition. They know the benefits. They know more than anyone else. They're just following a dictatorship rule by the Americans to follow something that is already agonizing. Even the Americans are changing. They are already putting on the table $2 trillion, $2 trillion to make this happen. And we are, and we are still hesitating to understand if this is good or it's, or it's not good. So yes, you are absolutely right. When they throw $100,000 uh, to support um, a startup, it's like, a, you know, take a toothbrush and you go and come back. It's, come on. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. I agree with you. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's purely economics. It's a financial issue. This doesn't, maybe my words are not, uh, 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 politically correct, but I believe that somehow the politician have to understand that whatever they're doing or thinking is wrong. It's absolutely yeah. wrong. That's why I also support the legalized cannabis party. They're doing an extraordinary job. Uh, not as much I believe that we should be doing because we are in a state of emergency on regard to the climate, climate change and all the problems that we're facing. So yes, yeah. we need to, we, you know, the companies such as yourself should be getting right now $2 million, uh, an army of engineers to help you to, to, to formulate and reshape whatever you're doing and, and, and yeah. conquer the market because this yeah. is about now conquering the market and change yeah. the law so that, uh, so that like France, like for instance, Six months ago, the government of France, they decided that half of the government investments in infrastructure have to be done with hempcrete. Very yes. simple, it's straightforward. You, 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 you want to energize the supply chain, you need to put money and, and change the law and make it, and let us compete in this capitalism that we embrace based on our freedom values but at the same time, it's the own government that doesn't let us grow. So, yep. so. But at the same time, as a business, we can take the lead and show the government what needs to be done. Yes. And, uh, and I, I am very grateful that there are many people in the government that are actually willing to listen to what we've got to say. So if, if there's any engineers, any investors, anyone who is keen to work with us, we've got the smarts, we've got the the passion to make this happen. Um, and um, there are many, many people who want to support us. Um, so yeah, if there is anyone, they can get in touch with me and, and yeah, I totally agree, let's make this happen. So after this interview, I hope that your world, your passion, your knowledge, and above all that willingness to change the world or make it better, like a good friend of mine tells me, uh, yes. Um, yeah. I will make sure that this uh, interview will reach uh, as many people as possible. Marvelous. Thank you, Iggy, for your time. Uh, we'll be sharing our hemp, our, hemp, our hemp timber that we have manufactured with other alliance and other products that are specifically for home construction. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and you never know what's, what happened after this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, listen, there are so many different things that are happening at the moment. It's it's a really exciting industry to be in. Um, it's challenging, um, but yeah. Nevertheless, there are a lot of people who have got an idea where it needs to go, and um, as long as we we keep that vision where it needs to go, um, we will get there. Yes. Yeah. Mass collaboration, like a good friend in South Africa tells me, Mr. Akhek Jamomil is tells me there is not any other way. Mass collaboration is the way to go. Correct, absolutely. Thank you, Iggy, for your time and all the best. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.